Hello, my name is Jim Strader and I'm the owner and manager of New Holland Rochester. It's a farm equipment dealership that's located here in Rochester, Indiana. I'm standing in front of an array of solar panels. Uh, an array in this case is 24 solar panels mounted on a single mount. Um, and if you can see all of them that are here, there's a total of six of these arrays that have 24 panels in them. We installed two of the 24 panels raised back in February of this year and we're impressed enough with the performance of those two arrays that we added four more and we got those going on August the 17th. We know what our electrical use is uh, after doing some things to save some power we, and, uh, and after having put up a Berge 10kW wind turbine that's been three and a half years ago and we knew that from the performance of the two that we got started in February that if we put four more up that we simply could meet the electrical needs of our farm equipment dealership with the solar panels in addition to the wind turbine. The panels are, offer some unique opportunities. Uh, our customers are farmers, and I've known for a long time that the rural community has access to the wind and solar resources that are out there. Not that there aren't opportunities in some more urban areas on rooftops, but the advantage that we have out here in the country is that we have a little more space and we can ground mount the solar panels. The ground mounting is important for two reasons. A solar panel breaks down and becomes less efficient when it gets hot. So a solar panel like you see behind me, if this same panel was located in Phoenix, Arizona, for example, it wouldn't produce as much power for the same amount of sun as it will produce here. Likewise, these panels that are behind me right now on the um, October afternoon with a bright sun will produce more power than they're going to do with a bright sun in July simply because it's cooler now. The ground mounting allows for total um, air aeration. There's nothing behind the solar array here like a roof that would block some of the air that would move through there and keep the thing cool. So we like the ground mount for that reason. Ground mounting also offers the opportunity to place these arrays directly pointed to the south, which is the most efficient place to go. If you have it on a roof and your roof happens to be facing south, that's a good deal. But most people have buildings built for another reason than the orientation for solar panels. And uh, therefore, if you put the panels up there, they're not going to have the best orientation. We also can tilt these things in one axis. So as the sun goes up and down, as the seasons come and go in the southern sky, we can tilt it. You only have to move it about four times a year to get the maximum benefit out of that tilt. It's not something you got to do every week or every month and so forth. Last and certainly not least is serviceability. If you put a panel up on a roof, you now have compromised some of the engineering specifications on the roof. And unless it was made to have solar panels put on it, you, know, you have more weight on there than that roof was originally designed to have. By putting them down on the ground, you can walk up here with literally a, a four-foot tall step ladder and just about do anything that you need to do without having to climb up on top of a roof. Run the risk of uh, something falling off or including yourself falling off of the roof. So ground mount has a whole lot of advantages. I got into this um, installation here just because I'm very interested in renewable energy. But I was also looking for a long time now for a solar or wind or other renewable energy resource that made sense money-wise and would be something that would be acceptable on the market. I think there's a huge business opportunity uh, if you can find such a system. And everybody's heard about the huge drop in solar panel prices. If you hear about Solyndra and the federal loan that went bad and, and all of the turmoil that that created, um, while that's, that is what it is, uh, a lot of people missed a point that solar panels have dropped to just about 30% of the price that they were about three and a half years ago. I know that if the price of the corn my farm customers sell had dropped to 30% of what it was three and a half years ago, their business plans wouldn't work either. But we can take advantage of this price drop and understand now that solar in our part of the world works from a financial standpoint. Just using the normal 30% tax credit that's available to everybody until January the 1st of 2017 and using depreciation that's available for any kind of a leasehold um, uh, thing that you might do on a farm uh, can get this payback with today's energy prices down to less than seven years. A lot of people find that hard to believe, but we have the data right here in Rochester, Indiana uh, to back that up. So I've got an office building that's across uh, the driveway here that's rented to the government. It's the Farm Services Agency building. We put two 32 panel array arrays up there. We got those going on the 28th of August. And I'm confident that with my electric bill here in about a, a week's time, I'm going to actually have a credit from the utility, which in our case is Duke Energy. So there's a few other things that you really need to know about net metering agreements and so forth. But it's not a huge issue to put a solar system in. And uh, we are actually selling these arrays now. We've got six of them uh, retail. We have three of them under construction right now. So things go like I hope they go and expect that they're going to go um, well.
made this a part of our farm equipment business, serving the same customers that we sell tractors and combines and balers and utility vehicles and all the other stuff that we normally do here at the dealership.